my most favorite show, Sisters of Leisure, with Michelle and Tracy. But today, hosting the show by herself is none other than my little sister, Michelle. Take it away, Michelle. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Are we still in Kwanzaa? I have no idea what's happening with uh, the holidays. It's over. I'm so glad that part of the year is done. Welcome to a new year, 2024. I am Michelle, the other half of Sisters in Leisure, and we are living every day and seeking and understanding real events. Um, today, you know what? We are having a special guest. She is popping off the year. Her name is Maisha Watts. And we are going to get into it. We're going to talk about what's happening out in the world. We're going to talk about, you know, our path, our journey, how we come to where we are right now. Welcome to Sisters of Leisure, Maisha. How are you doing today? I'm great. That oh, is yeah. good. I am well. I am well. Thank you for coming and talking to me today. So, Maisha, you know what? We Like I just finished saying, we're wrapping up the year. The year is done. Uh, we just started a new year. It's 2024, and a lot's going on. A lot is happening in the world. We just finished talking about aliens. Some people believe, some people don't. You know, uh, my brother broke it down so eloquently. But I have a question for you. I have a question for you. First off, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go in. We'll, we'll go into all that. Um, my name is Maisha Watts. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I taught for like. Roughly nine years. Um, then I moved to Rome and got into like the restaurant industry. You know. Little things like that. Yeah. Little things. I see you representing on um, Green Bay. Are you not from Green Bay? I am not. I am not. I was a little girl when um Brett Favre was here when I met him. Uh -huh. And I've been a fan ever since. Okay, okay. So that's why you represent great. Because I was wondering, I was just like, okay, Green Bay, I guess that's where you're from. Okay, so like I was saying, I mean, Aisha, you know, we're entering a new year. And, you know, I was telling, I was saying earlier today, you know, it was a thing a couple of weeks ago that there was aliens spotted at the mall in Miami. And you're like, what? There's aliens spotted in Miami. So real quick question, do you believe in aliens? Do you believe that we have aliens? I don't not believe it. I don't think I don't think people just out there spotting them at the mall or nothing like that. <laughs> but I do, I do think that, I don't know. I just find it hard to believe that we are the only people just like walking the planet. And then when you think of like the galaxies and all of that stuff, like I can't say that I don't think there's other beings that could be like beyond us. Yeah. You know, I believe that. I believe, I, I believe, I believe it would be, you know, very um, uh, small of us to think that we're the only ones to roam the earth. Even though my brother, like I said, said it so eloquently that, yeah, you are, you know, it's, but to to believe that there is just us walking around, it, it kind of gives me like, okay, well, that's boring in a way, you know, because there's so many, it's it's so broad, it's so mass, it's so mm -hmm. expensive that, you know, if, if, it, if we are not, I would not be surprised and so uh, I want to go on and ask you know like spiritually do you have a spiritual practice you know I know you 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 are um you 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 live off the grid you don't you're in a in a field of just massive nature do you have a spiritual guidance a spiritual way um yeah I do so like I grew up in the church and literally like from birth and I grew up singing in the choir and like I was never really big on praying mm -hmm. but I watched like my family members pray all the time mm -hmm. so it wasn't until I got married and into my own domain that I was just like oh man like these people ain't just praying for me no more I gotta pray for myself and yeah. I didn't really know how to get into doing that because like I don't it was just never my thing it's just like talking in front of people like singing in front of people I just felt like oh man this is weird but then I finally came to terms that like I remember being a kid this man told me when you pray you need to talk to God like you're talking to anybody else 
Mm-hmm. He was like one. He was very different in my church, and it was probably one of my only years in vacation Bible school that I can really remember anything. But like he even broke down like the Lord's prayer, like each line of what it represented. So make sure when you pray, this is the kind of stuff that you say. And it's just always kind of stuck with me. And so just like every day, you know, I always ask God for like traveling graces. And I always ask for him to like dispatch my angels all around me because I was told that, you know, God gave us our own angels. And if we don't like dispatch them, they're not like looking out for us and protecting us. And again, I don't know how true it is, but it was just something that I learned as a kid. So I always make it a point to say that every day and to just ask for him to, you know, protect me and my husband throughout our journey, throughout the day from danger seen and unseen and to like protect my land, my animals, my home when I'm not around and stuff like that. So like, that's, usually what I say on a daily basis yeah that's a good speech. you know because matter of fact today I was uh cleaning up and you know and I use a, a certain uh Florida water to kind of you know wipe everything down or whatever freshen everything up and my son was like well, what are you doing and I was just like we you know I'm praying over the house you know cleaning it and, you know getting clear in the air and he was just like oh he thought it was strange I was like you better pray over your house who else is gonna pray over your house yeah my mom and them told me that um like i never understood the whole people walking around with the sage and uh-huh. like how people like burn sage and cedar and all of that i just never got it it was not my thing and mm-hmm. like i tried it but then i said i don't see myself doing this every day i won't do it every day yeah. and so i was like i need to find something that i can say for myself to make mm-hmm. sure that i'm covered on my end because that's not mm-hmm. enough and like when things get hard like maybe at work and stuff like that my mom would be like girl you need to take your oil and you need to just pray over that building and like I don't care if you got to go from one door to the next door but you need to make sure that you you pray over this building pray over your co-workers pray over all of that because you know Satan is out to get you so regardless to anything that happens you need to just pray over all of it yeah yeah you know you we we have to we we that's the only way like it it if we we cannot expect anybody else to do it for us. I tell my kids all the time, no one's gonna do it for you. You gotta do it for yourself. If you don't, if you can't figure it out and do it for yourself, I can't go to my age and say, My age, can you pray that you know everything is good for me and that my family is safe and secure? And no, that's gonna that's gonna come out of your right. mouth. That's gonna happen to for you. So, you know, like we talk on the phone, we've been going back and forth for a few days now. And so we were able to have a conversation, which I would just love so much about the un- uh, unseen, you know, mm-hmm. about a time in your life where you have felt like, you know what, this is God. This, I, you know what, there's no doubt that this, this event is, was divine for you, for your eyes to see and for you to believe. So can you give us, a, you know, uh, quickly uh, tell us a story about where you had no doubt that it was divine for you intervention god however you want to put it okay so i told i had already told you one but i actually got like another one too okay. so like the first one when i was a kid i was me and my aunt shared a room and i was in the bed and i was laying down and the room next to mine was like my cousin's room and my brother's room it, we called it the boys room because it was so many of them it was like three or four of them in one room and like out of nowhere I just saw something kind of like walk through it almost looked like it was glowing and my cousin came through right behind and was like hey you saw that and I was like yeah I did did you and he was just like yeah and I remember getting up and I was little but it was just something that always stuck with me I remember getting up and we walked behind it all the way through the living room through my grandmother's room and then we got to the kitchen and it was like gone but we were scared to go go that same way so we turned around and went back the way we came and he took me back to my room and he went to his and the next morning we told my grandma and she was like oh that's just aunt so-and-so she just she just coming through checking on everybody she do that every night and I was like what and just to me I thought it was really weird but like it was 
it wasn't something we could explain. And yeah. like, had I been the only person that saw it, I probably would have just brushed it off, went back to sleep and thought I was crazy. But yeah. like, my cousin is like 10 years older than me. So he was like a teenager and he yeah. was seeing the same thing that I was seeing. And I was just kind of like, oh man, that's weird. And like, also like growing up in church, like I always used to hear people like speaking in tongues and I would see them, you know, like start praise dancing. I would just be like, you know, you think people are faking it sometimes and you just don't mm-hmm. actually know. And one day we had like a youth explosion and this lady had come probably about an hour and I had heard good things about her and we had a great night. I feel like, you know, all like the teens opened up and talked about it and it wasn't like any adults around. They were they were there, but they weren't with us. They were like in the back of the church. And so yeah. at the end of the service and the explosion, she asked like our pastor and the first lady, hey, can I pray over a couple of people? And they were just like, yeah, that's fine. And so they was like, first off, we're going to start with the girl in the gray shirt. And I'm looking around like, okay, who the girl in the gray shirt? And it was me. (laughs) It was me. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, I am going crazy. I am not going to be able to get up here. I don't know this lady. Um, No, I don't want her to be touching on me and praying on me and stuff because I don't know her. And I was real skeptical because my mama always said, I don't like just anybody laying hands on me. Mm -hmm. and so I got up there and like she started speaking my life like I had never heard ever and I was panicking like internally I was like how she know this what is going on like I didn't tell her about none of this today so how does she know that this is what I'm going through and this is what I'm dealing with and like I really don't even I remember the first half of the stuff that she said to me Mm -hmm. and then the next thing I remember I was opening my eyes and I was sitting on the pew and my first lady well no I didn't pass well I don't know I can't say I did or I didn't because nobody ever talked to me about it I just remember I was up there and I started crying I had my hands up and then when I remember opening my eyes again I was sitting on the pew and my first lady was sitting behind me rubbing my back like that's what I remember and at that point she was praying for somebody else at the front of the church and I was just like I don't even know what happened but like I just remember like she was telling me my entire life without me even knowing it and I was just kind of like oh man how does she know this is happening to me like I ain't talked about this with nobody what's going on and that was like my first real encounter where I was just like okay so God definitely be sending prophets down here to tell us stuff and be talking to us and I was just I was I don't know I was caught off guard and I feel like at that time I might have been like 18 or 19. I was just becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I know, I think I was in my first year of college. I had just come back from my first year of college when that happened. Uh And I was scared. (laughs) I was scared. I was in church every Sunday after that, just like praying. I was (laughs) like, oh Lord. I was just like, I don't know. I was just like, if she know this, then anybody might know this. Help me. I was genuinely scared because I just couldn't figure it out. I'm like, this lady don't know me. Yeah. But she knew me. (laughs) She knew you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's deep. You know, you know, that happens to a lot of people. That happens to a lot of people. I've had that happen to me where someone just come to me and just had a conversation. I'm like, huh? Like, that's not something I've it, it can happen at work, you know. Mm-hmm. Where you're like you try to figure out, like, where, where did, this, where did you come from? You know, why are you saying this to me? So, like, um, so what role do you think that you know being mindful, being your mindfulness, you know, helps you with your spiritual journey? Like, how are you guided through? Like, what role does your mindset is playing on your um your spiritual journey right now? I don't know. What do you mean? Like we're, we're like okay. So, do you have um you 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 have a a spiritual uh thought process? So you know, like has it has it changed since two thousand twenty? Like how has your spiritual journey gone? How is it is it taking you right now? Like where are you sitting in it? Um, I don't know. I feel like I've always had like a really close connection with God. And I feel like 
he always talked to me like through my dreams. Like when I was mm-hmm. a kid, I always had very vivid dreams. And my grandmother used to always be like, hey, if she started telling you about her dream, make sure you listen to what she's saying. Mm-hmm. And she used to have them all the time. Mm-hmm. And my brothers and my cousins, they all used to, you know, tell me I was crazy. And they used to mm-hmm. be like, no, that's not what's happening. But like, I used to have dreams when I was younger of things. And then like, I'd be like, so-and-so pregnant. And my family would be like, like girl, hush. And then it'll be like a month later and they'll be pregnant. And I'd be like, told you. <laughs> or it would be, it would just be stuff like that. Like I used to tell people all the time, like, hey, somebody in our family about to die in the next like couple of weeks. And they would be like, stop it. Stop saying stuff like that. Yeah. And then within like a week or two, somebody will be done passed away. And they'll be like, Lord have mercy. She dreamt this and didn't even tell nobody. And I'll be like, I did. You just didn't listen to me. Yeah. And like, that was me as a kid. And so like me and my grandmother, we didn't have a super close connection. And I think it's because like we both had like the same attitude. So we was always like button heads. Mm-hmm. and so I just remember one day she told me you know what when you have your dreams you interpret them for yourself don't tell nobody no more because people have you feeling like what your dreams are aren't true and so she was like it everybody don't have to see it as long as you see it yeah. and so like in my adult life I would have like dreams crazy dreams and instead of just like coming out and saying hey guys this is my dream this is what happened mm-hmm. I just didn't and I would just watch and observe and like yeah. even like my aunt I would try to tell her like hey you know I had one of them crazy dreams last night I ain't gonna go into no detail but you know just be watching out for the house you know make sure you you driving yeah. right keep the yeah. seat building, all that kind of stuff on and she would just be like okay yeah and I'd be like this is that's as simple as I'm gonna keep it but I just feel like in my life I'm t- I still have that same connection that I had as a child I still wake up and I have crazy dreams and I tell my husband and he'd be like oh what is it your you think it's your intuition can it be your intuition I don't know you, Maybe. because okay so it, and I'm so glad we're having this conversation because we are you know living every day and seeking and understanding real events and so like when it comes to um, you know, conversations like that, you know, nothing is cookie cutter, first off, and this is a safe, you know, place to, to, so we can have this conversation. And so, you know, I believe that there's no such thing as a coincidence, you know, and so and, I and, agree. We, and we need to have conversations like this to start having people talk about what's happened to them and their, their dreams and, and, and the unseen on things, because we always talk about what we see, what we see, what we see, but the unseen is just as powerful. It, it's just as relevant. Mm-hmm. The unseen, as a scene, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, yeah. it's, it's so like, you know, like when you say grandma, your grandma's like, don't be telling people that, don't be talking about that. Why not? Why? I wonder why. Why do you think that, you know, this conversation is something that we sh- really shouldn't be having or people shouldn't have or people tell you, don't say that. I think for my grandmother, it was because as a child, I had them so often. Like my dreams when I go to sleep at night are so detailed that when I tell them, it take me like 10 to 15 minutes. My husband will tell you, he don't remember nothing he dreamt about last night and he never do. But like, I can remember multiple dreams from every night. And so when they are like the ones that shake me Mm -hmm. and I wake up and my grandma will be like, now there might be God waking you up, but there Mm -hmm. might be Satan trying to get you too. So make sure that you know what, like what you're dealing with. And so she just got to the point where she was just like, my dreams were too much. So just stop telling people until Mm. you know until you know stop saying stuff like because they're not easy to interpret and so mm-hmm. she used to just always just be on my case and so I always went to her with them yeah but as I got older I didn't because I didn't really talk to her like I said we would butt heads and I would tell her stuff and she would just brush me off and I would be like you know what whatever you one of them people too then like you yeah. don't even want to listen to it 
And so yeah. I just kind of got to a place where like here now in my life, if I have a dream, I talk about it. Yeah. I'll call my aunt and I'll be like, hey, <laughs> this is what I had a dream about. And I might not be able to, to go into like full details of everything, but I do yeah. tell her, hey, look, I had a dream about this. So don't be surprised if so-and-so happened. Like mm-hmm. I got into a car accident a couple days ago and okay. my aunt was just like, I just dreamt about that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> it would have been great if you would have told me. <laughs> yeah. You know, that would have maybe made me think and be a little bit more cautious out there. If you had a dream that I had a car accident, it don't necessarily mean that that was going to happen, but happen. Yeah. I would have definitely been a little bit more aware and like yeah. something that they always said to me and I never like really got it and I still don't was run your dreams backwards and so it was just like when you see somebody die in the dream it probably Mm -hmm. means somebody having a kid Mm -hmm. and so like if somebody's pregnant that's when you should be aware of like death Mm -hmm. so my grandmother always told me that and I thought it was weird but she was never lying to me every time I would have like a dream of somebody giving birth I would be like oh man so and so Mm -hmm. just died and I'd be like dang And so it always happened that way. And like people hear it and they think, oh man, that's weird. You don't know what you're talking about. How you know? Like, but I don't know. It's just, it's always been that way in my life. Yeah. And I would have never understood it if my grandma didn't try to explain it to me the best that she could. But now when I have dreams, I just talk about it. Like she's been gone almost five years and I'm like, "Mm -mm, I got to talk about it. Sorry, grandma. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, because those things like this, it happens. It happens all the time. You know, I've had situations where I'm having a conversation and then next thing you know, 30 minutes later, I'm having the same conversation or close to and someone say the exact same thing that I was just talking to someone else about. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's like double within 30 minutes. Like that has to have some type of significance that has to, you know, like those synchronicities that always seem to you know occur mm-hmm. so like you know listen I, I I start talking about it like we it it, it had we have to understand that this there there's um there's just power in talking about what is not the norm the 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 un, the the not so you know uh, let's see uh common things to talk about I, I i i feel it's important and we have to you know start talking about things that are maybe not so um that we don't hear about on a daily basis so can you go ahead and share um with us a little bit about your um a little bit about a dream that you may have had that, you know, that you can, uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to come up with something without uh, being too all in your business (laughs) or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So do you have a, do you believe in a ritual? Do you believe in rituals? I don't not for me no okay but you know okay I have a question now you know as a person that's a Christian inside of the church I say I saw rituals all the time did you like what like what kind of rituals did you see rituals on the, all the, time, the drinking of the blood and the holy ghost and, you know like communion communion that's a ritual yeah. yeah well I saw it I saw it um I took it when I was a kid Every yeah. first Sunday. Every first they Sunday. Made, that's cool. They had us come in white and everybody took it. But somewhere down the line, I stopped taking it. Mm-hmm. And again, this was a grandmama thing. She mm-hmm. was just like, she's like, this, this is supposed to be you like cleansing yourself. Mm-hmm. And so she would be like, if you ain't got your mind right, don't eat that cracker and don't drink that juice. And I would be like, okay, all right. And so yeah. as an adult, I wasn't even going to church no more because I stopped going probably around like 16, 17. Wow. And I would only, and I, 
Um, because I went so much as a child, they made uh-huh. me go so much that I was just like, "Ooh, y'all doing too much for me." Mm-hmm. And when I turned sixteen, they wasn't like forcing me to go to church every Sunday. I went every third Sunday because I had to sing in the choir, and I was mm-hmm. the vice president of the youth choir, so like I had to be there. Yeah. Then when I went to college, by the time I got back from college, I wasn't going to church every Sunday. I was going if somebody said, "Hey." Uh, so and so wants you to come. Will you sing a song today? And that's when mm-hmm. I started going. And mm-hmm. I was more of just I read my own Bible. Mm-hmm. I felt like the church was in me. I didn't have to go mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. church. That and like I don't know. I for a minute I felt like I outgrew my church, mm-hmm. and so I was looking for another church. And before I got married and moved here, I had found the church that I knew I was going to join and be a member of. Which church was that? I don't even remember the name of it now. It's oh. been like it's been like four, five years. Uh-huh. But it, it was a church that I passed every Sunday of my life to get to church. Yeah. And yeah. one day I was at my brother's job. Mm-hmm. And this guy that always worked with him was like, Hey, you should come check out my church. And it just so happened to be my coworker at the time, her mm-hmm. church. And so mm-hmm. I went. And I just remember, like, the music was what I wanted. Like, Mm -hmm. the way that she would preach was everything. And I was just like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, I love this church. Yeah. And then I remember going back, like, twice. And after I went, um, their youth pastor had asked me if I would come in on Fridays and work with the youth. And I was just like, yeah, I will. And then I met my husband. And I moved away within six months of meeting him. and. I just, I didn't go back. But every time I go down there, I pass that church and I look and I be like, oh, I wonder how they doing in there. Wonder if the same people still in there. Cause it's been so long, but yeah. it was, it was a, it was a wonderful church, but I have not been able to find that yeah. up here. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere. Because when I go to church, I'm looking for somebody that when they preach, like it actually like catches my attention. Yeah. And I just feel like the church I grew up in, like I outgrew that. It was just mm-hmm. yelling and screaming, hooping and hollering. And I was just like, no, nah, that's not really my my domain. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. I don't you know. know we, all grow, we all grow spiritually. And, you know, and so this is not, you know, I just, I, you know, this conversation is just something I've been wanting to have with someone on Sisters of Leisure because, you know, we are on a, um, you know, it's, it's a new time. It's a new day and age. And so we are, you know, growing. Things are changing. Everything is just, you're getting all this information. And, you know, you know, all, everyone is guided differently. We, I, I really do feel like we're no longer cookie cutter. You know, things are right. definitely changing. Things are moving. Um, people are um, finding spirit in different ways. And so it's not... Um, uh, uh, one size fit all. So I just want to just, you know, thank you for coming on, you know, Sisters of Leisure, um, for being able to have this conversation. It's awkward. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to come and in, inform into its own thing. Um, so I love this. I love you talking about your grandmother and, you know, you, your ancestor. I'm sure she is proud of you and who you are today as a person, as a young lady. If you um, can tell everyone, our guests, our, our, the people that are watching, how to follow you on social media. Oh, so on Facebook, my name is Maisha Queen B. Watts. And on Instagram, I'm not even sure because I really don't get on there that much. I think it's just Maisha dot Price. Price. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my maiden name, so I had to keep one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my maiden name. Okay, so Maisha dot Price six. Mm-hmm. And, and your Facebook is what else again? Maisha Queen B Watts. Okay. Okay. And you know, listen, guys, this is a leisure. There's some changes going on. We're going to get and find our way, our flow. Go on our Instagram page, follow Sisters of Leisure, 
follow um, us on YouTube, Sisters of Leisure. Like I said, Facebook is Sisters of Leisure, Instagram, Sisters of Leisure, and YouTube, Sisters of Leisure. And you guys, thank you. We miss Tracy. We'll, you know, you never know. We might see her again pop up here, but go check us out. Once again, Maisha Watts, I appreciate you for coming and having this conversation with me about spirituality. Anytime. Uh, seeing things and people can check you out on your social media also. And I appreciate you for a little bell to let everybody know to, to allow. Thank you uh, to all my ancestors for guiding me through this interview today. And I appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Bye.